guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a species spotlight. Today I'm going to tell you about a variant of Sunda Danu. If you remember correctly, a few weeks ago I talked about the blue guys. This is Sunda Danio rubellus, or the red Sunda Danio, and they are really stunning. I haven't worked with them for very long, but I'm already adding them to my list of must-haves. Uh, right now I have them housed in a little 10 gallon with some Hera Giardoni, a little bit of driftwood and some plants. So let's take a look and I'll tell you more about them. I find them to be especially fascinating because their classification only came about in the past five years. When they were first discovered a long, long time ago, they were all lumped under the name Sunda Daniel Axelrodi. But as of 2011, seven new species have been identified, with three of them being pretty readily available in the trade. Rubellus is one of the newer ones, and they're really beautiful. So let's take a look. As you can see, Sunda Danio Red still have that green-blue sheen along their dorsolateral surface, meaning their entire side. But they're differentiated because they also have an orange to reddish stripe that borders that blue-green color. I think that they're really unusual looking and very, very beautiful. Now, I have fed them some frozen baby brine, which is why everybody is going absolutely bonkers. And it makes it difficult to keep in focus, but I wanted you to see how easy they are to feed. Now, just like other student Danios, they have a very significant sexual dichromatism or sexual dimorphism, meaning the males are really colorful and the females are basically clear. The males also have that black anal fin. As you can see in this one. And these guys come from the Kapuas Basin in Indonesia. And as I mentioned, there are now seven species of Sunda Danio, with three commonly being available on the market, commonly meaning you can get them. Uh, they're certainly not a common fish. And they usually range in price from about four to six dollars a piece. Now, this is a species that I think is especially important to breed mainly because they come from peat swamps and peat swamps are ex extremely extremely vulnerable and are disappearing at a very rapid rate mainly because of deforestation but also because of agriculture and even some of the peat swamps are just simply being drained now these guys i find to be especially fascinating uh, if you remember back to when we talked about Danianella. Uh, I talked about miniaturization and how Danianella lacks a lot of the bones that uh, most full-size fishes have. And there's something similar going on with Sunda Danio, which is why they're having a difficult time really deciding where their classification lies. They have a pretty high level of morphological variability, meaning they're, they're quite a bit different from most full-size fishes. They have less rows of teeth, less, less teeth in each of the rows. They're lacking scales entirely on their caudal peduncle, right in front of that anal fin. And they have fewer bones. I, I find this to be absolutely fascinating. Um, and there's some thought that some of the miniaturization with a lot of these species is in response to the really low pH conditions of the peat swamps but more study needs to be done to figure that out. Now these guys will exhibit their best coloration in a tank that is deeply stained with tannins. And when you have it deeply stained with tannins, the overhead light will hit it and they will absolutely just glow. It is phenomenal and really different, difficult to duplicate in a video or a photograph. Um, I, I don't know that there's much more stunning than Sunda Danio housed properly. Just absolutely beautiful. They only get an inch at max size. 
and they can take a temperature range anywhere in the 70s really. Low hardness and low pH is pretty important for these guys. They can take as low as four and as high as about six and a half, maybe seven if the hardness is not real hard. But despite their really tiny size, I find them to be exceptionally easy to feed, readily taking uh, crushed flake, in this instance baby brine, micro worms, or any other tiny food. They would be perfect in a small, low-light planted tank with this thick jumbles of driftwood, dense planting, and a dark substrate. I find the dark substrate really helps their color intensify. All in all, just really beautiful fish and very breedable, though the fry are extremely tiny. This is one that, uh, if a more experienced hobbyist really wants an important project soon to Danio, any of any of the fish in the genus should really be worked with because of the threat to their wild habitat. Thanks for watching. Make sure you guys don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my species spotlights or Tuesday tips. Also make sure you stop by my Facebook as well as my website, MissJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stop list, and information on all things nano. As always, if you guys have any questions, suggestions, or comments, let me know below.